Okay. So, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, ako po si Christy Candelaria from the Regional Cooperation and Training Section of the Technological Services Division of DOS ITDI. So, ako po ang inyong magiging host uh, for this webinar ngayong araw na ito. Okay, so on behalf of DOS ITDI Management, uh, we would like to welcome all our participants uh, to the DUST ITDI Free Webinar Series 2021. At ang topic po natin for today is about uh, dried fish processing. Okay, actually, uh, ito pong ating webinar for today. Ito po ay second na sa ating um, uh, offering under Fish Processing uh, Free Webinar Series uh, for this year. So yung pong first topic natin na inoffer po namin last January ay about fermented fish naman po. Ano? So maybe some of you uh, have also attended the said webinar. Ano po? And for those who would want to know more, more topics about uh, fish processing, uh, we still have two more topics uh, 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 under this uh, webinar series nga po. Uh, ito po ay thermal processing and smoke fish processing. So ito po ay offer uh, in March and April uh, respectively. Okay, so I guess uh, many of us uh, love eating uh, dried fish. Tama po ba ako? Especially uh, during breakfast, uh, masarap pong iulam ito. Kapartner po nito ang, itlo, ang egg and meron pong uh, tomatoes. At uh, mas ginaganahan po tayong kumain, di po ba, kapag uh, ang ulam natin ay ito yung isda. Okay, so um, paano po ba ang tamang proseso sa pagtutuyo ng isda. Siyempre, yung alam natin, uh, ano lang siya, ibibilad sa araw, yung mga conventional po na proseso. Uh, but uh, for this topic po, sa webinar na to, malalaman po ninyo yung iba't ibang uh, methods, uh, yung mga proseso, how to uh, uh, pag-dry po ng fish. Okay. So, uh, yun nga po, ang mga key topics uh, under this uh, webinar, Ayun pong awareness po no o sa reasons for fish processing. Ah uh, ganoon din po yung mga causes ng uh, fish spoilage o yung pong pagkasira ng isda and then mga principles po sa fish drying. Uh, um maging yung syempre importante po malaman natin kung ano na po yung mga klasing isda ang po pwedeng i-dry. So lahat po ba ng isda ay eh, pwedeng nating ma-dry. Malalaman po natin yan later on. Maging ang Mga utensils, mga equipment na kailangan para po sa fish drying. And syempre, ang pinaka-importante po na yung step-by-step -step process sa fish drying. At uh, kasama rin po dyan, uh, discuss ng ating resource speaker, ang dried fish standards for quality. So, importante po yan. Malaman po natin yung about sa quality, sa safety requirements and specifications. Uh, ito po ay pertaining sa mga test na required para po ma-insure yung safety no kasi syempre pagkain to kailangan nating ma-insure yung safety for consumption ng inyong produkto especially po kung ito inyong i-market o ipagbebenta okay so inaasahan po namin that after this webinar uh, you will be able to use your learnings po ano at maging useful po ang topic na to uh, may it be for own consumption or maging source po ito ng livelihood nyo po no, in the future. So those who would want to start a business, baka ito na po yung uh, magustuhan yung simulan. Ito po yung uh, dried fish processing, especially na ano po, gusto pa rin po uh, ang online selling. So kahit po nasa bahay lang tayo, pwede po tayong kumita or magkaroon po tayo ng extra income. Uh, dahil alam po naman natin na marami sa atin ang affected ang livelihood uh, dahil pa rin po dito sa ating nararanasang pandemic. Okay, so for our webinar rules po, no, uh, para po ma-insure yung quality po ng inyong video and audio, check lang po from time to time yung inyong devices po and internet connection. Though, syempre pagdating po sa internet connection, hindi po natin niya makakonsol kung Minsan, uh, maging blurred yung inyong screens dahil uh, unstable po yung inyong connection. So, ganun po talaga. Kahit po sa office namin, nararanasan po namin yan. And kahit po dito sa bahay, kasi 
uh, most of us po ay work from home dahil po kay COVID-19. Okay, so um, yun nga po, pakacheck lang po uh, from time to time ng inyong mga devices and uh, siguro maganda kung saan po yung spot na uh, mas malakas po yung connection dyan sa location nyo, doon po kayo uh, mag-stay para po hindi maiwasan na po yung maputol kayo, no? And of course, um, maging attentive po tayo and stay engaged po dito sa ating uh, webinar kasi meron po tayong post test and yun po ay mahalaga para po uh, maisyuhan kayo ng certificate after po ng ating webinar. And meron din po kami iaas na uh, paminsan-minsan na participation from the participants kaya maganda po na tayo mag-participate. And, and if you have a uh, questions po, mga clarifications about our topic, uh, gamitin nyo lang po yung chat box, no? Yan po ay makikita nyo sa side or below of your screen. At yan po mga katanungan yan ay i-address po mamaya ng ating resource speaker pagkatapos po ng kanyang presentation. And ganoon din po, kung gusto nyo po mag-take down notes, i-ready nyo lang po ang inyong mga paper and pen para ma-inotes uh, nyo po yung mga uh, mga terms, mga concepts na gusto nyo po matandaan. And for our uh, question and answer portion, uh, mag-aalat po tayo ng 30 minutes or more, depende po sa volume po ng mga questions na may receive natin uh, for this topic mamaya. So yan po, as much as possible, uh, masagot po natin lahat ng uh, concerns niyo about this topic. Okay, next please. Okay, so but, be but before uh, before we start with our webinar topic, uh, syempre na ito mo namin, pa, namin ipakilala sa inyo ang aming ahensya, especially po uh, to those who are first time po no, to engage with our office or ngayon nyo lang po na laman ang Industrial Technology Development Institute. So yan po, no? ang, yun nga po, ang ITDI, uh, Industrial Technology Development Institute ay isa pong Research and Development Institute or RDI uh, under the Department of Science and Technology or DUST. Ang DUST po ay pinamumunuan ng aming uh, uh, mahal na Secretary Fortunato uh, de, la Pen, de la Peña. At ang aming pong opisina, ITDI, ay headed po ng aming director, Dr. Annabel B. Briones. At ang aming pong opisina ay located po uh, within the DUST compound uh, dito po sa Bikutan, Taguig City. At kasama po namin, uh, kapitbahay po namin, ng iba pong mga uh, agencies pa under ng DUST dito po sa uh, Bikutan, uh, katulad po ng uh, Food Nutrition Research Institute or FNRI, maging ang Philippine Textile Research Institute or PTRI, Metals Industry Research Institute. Ganoon din po yung mga councils o so yung po mga funding agencies, no? Uh, katulad po ng PSHRD at uh, PCHRD. Uh, ganun din po ang Science Education Institute or SEI. Ito naman po yung about mga uh, DUST scholarship na po. And uh, Technology Application for Promotion Institute. Ito naman po yung TAPI. And syempre ang ating DOS uh, Central Office. At iba po ang mga opisina under po ng DUST. So kasama po natin yan. At meron po tayo mga Offices pa sa Quezon City, sa Los Baños, and yung pong ating mga regional offices. Sa lahat po ng regions, meron tayong DUST Regional Office, maging uh, Provincial uh, Science and Technology Centers. Uh, yan po, uh, meron po tayo niya. Sila po ang ating kapartner para po sa pag-promote at pag-transfer po ng ating mga developed technologies okay, para po magamit ng iba't iba pong mga kliyente sa mga probinsya at sa mga komunidad. Okay, so uh, to present our programs and services, and ino-offer nga po namin sa aming mga kliyente at yun po makater yung mga pangailangan ng various industries, no? Uh, kasama na po dyan yung mga academe, mga MSMEs, LGUs, mga NGOs, associations, uh, pati po yung mga private sector and other government agencies. Please watch our corporate videos.
tracing its roots back. technology transfer aimed at harnessing local industries productivity and competitiveness and translation of developed knowledge or innovation into the production sector paving the way for new businesses or startups as well DOST ITDI innovation serve as springboards for businesses to thrive and prosper in support of the administration's thrust in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST interventions are anchored on the theme Agama Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at Kinabukasan. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and when most of the country was in enhanced community quarantine, DOST ITDI bravely rose to the call of duty, distributed ready-to-eat foods such as the Pack of Hope, and mung bean cocoa milk drink to our frontliners in Metro Manila and other regions in the country. Produced face shields via 3D printing and donated these to hospital frontliners. Developing prototypes and 3D printing critically important parts of hospital equipment and improved design of N95 masks to better protect the frontliners. The institute is also providing interventions for our displaced countrymen who lost their jobs and livelihood by making training available online whenever necessary. And even before this pandemic, DOSD ITDI innovations were critical in rehabilitating communities that experience calamities and even war and make them whole again. DOSD ITDI has been preparing for an innovative ecosystem for new knowledge and technology to thrive and help make us ready for Industry 4.0. DOSD ITDI aims to achieve Kaimusan and ascertain the future or kinabukasan through its initiatives and help businesses in every Filipino adapt to COVID-19 under the new normal. State-of-the-art facilities are being established. Construction of the Simulation Packaging Testing Laboratory, SPTL, and Green Packaging Laboratory, GPL, is ongoing. At the SPTL, stress conditions that affect products during transport are simulated that can help mitigate losses during distribution. While produced, products can be processed and packed in a green packaging laboratory. AMSIN or the Advanced Manufacturing Center, DOST's 3D Printing Technology Center, is a joint project with Metals Industry Research and Development Center, MIRDC. ITDI focuses on developing multiple 3D printing materials from local materials to reduce costs. Halal Food Research and Development Facility With this facility in place, the Institute hopes to develop new food products that are compliant to halal standards and as well support DOST as it responds to Republic Act No. 10817 or the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Act. Enhancement of the competence and capabilities of the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines Expertise and facilities are being upgraded and construction of laboratory facilities for metrology and chemistry and biology are now ongoing. It is envisioned that the animal will provide the country with credible measurements, 
and traceability in the fields of physical, chemical, and biological metrology. And with the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST response has been decisive. With the support of President Duterte and the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, the DOST will establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, or VIP, to be constructed at the new Clark Economic Zone in Capastarla. The VIP shall be pursuing priority virology research and developing diagnostic kits, therapeutics, and vaccines for diseases caused by viruses, where DOST ITDI will have a critical function. From laying the groundworks for science and technology in the country, the Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology, through the years which turned 119 last July, has been consistently providing innovations to industry to help make them competitive, emerging as a credible industry partner. The Institute has been instrumental as well in mitigating hazards improving the lives of disaster victims and communities to rise again. With so much optimism with this cooperation and bridging of talents and expertise, we look forward to enhance science, technology, innovation, competitiveness, and the emergence of new research and development capabilities that hopefully will translate into new products and services that meet the current future needs of our nation and the people. Okay. So, thank you po for watching our uh, corporate video. And you should you have technical needs po under, under our expertise uh, such as uh, food processing, chemicals, and energy. Meron din po ang environment and biotechnology, material science, and packaging technology. At naging yung mga pangailangan nyo for trainings, no? technical assistance. Uh, ganun din po yung mga testing and uh, calibrations. Uh, you may send your letter request po no, to our office, uh, address to our director, Dr. Annabel Vibriones. At uh, kung kayo po yung mga nasa regions, Malayo po dito sa aming opisina, you can endorse your request po sa ating mga DOST regional offices. Yan po sa inyong mga lugar, maging sa uh, provincial SNP centers nga po na nabanggit ko kanina. And yan dyan po, naka, makita nyo po sa inyong mga, mga screens ang aming mga contact uh, details. Uh, meron po kami mga email, so pwede po nyo dyan i, ipadala ang inyong mga request letters. And you can, you may also uh, visit our website. Ganon din po, you may follow our uh, Facebook page. Those ITDI updates. Uh, para po doon sa, uh, makita nyo po ang aming mga events and activities. Uh, dito po sa aming office. And you may also uh, sub subscribe po sa ating, sa aming uh, YouTube channel. Those ITDI. So nandiyan po sa YouTube channel ang ang mga webinars po conducted po uh, last year naka post na po diyan so uh, kung kayo po ay interesado na i-visit ya makita po yung mga webinars namin na nagawa na uh, pwede niyo pong puntahan yung aming YouTube channel uh, may kita niyo rin po diyan ang aming uh, tech negosyo so ito po ay isang online program uh, na ito po ay in-air ni air po yung mga narratives yung mga insights ng mga technology generators, mga business people, and the consuming public on how they see the future technology. So, ang mga naka-feature po na technologies dyan ng ITDI ay uh, tulad po ng uh, virgin coconut oil, ginger processing, tableya, mang bean, coconut drink, uh, packaging, technology services, ang maging food safety, uh, mga emergency food reserve, uh, isotonic drink, hand sanitizer, taho, and many others. Yan. So, yan po ay mga technologies na yan ay very timely po, no? Uh, uh, para po dito sa ating new normal. Pero, uh, pwede na po itong magamit anytime, either under a normal situation or calamity or yung nga po sa crisis natin, during crisis. Okay, so, i-visit nyo lang po yung aming uh, website, uh, Facebook page, and YouTube channel. So, moving forward po. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, before ko po ibigay ang screen sa ating resource speaker. So I am pleased to introduce to you our resource speaker uh, for this webinar. Uh, she is a uh, science research analyst from the product development section of Food Processing Division of DOS ITDI. And she graduated a uh, Bachelor of Science in Food Technology cum laude. Yan. Ayan, mahuse po ang ating resource speaker from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. And uh, Ms. Uh, Joanne, uh, yan po ang aming tawag kay Ms. Joanne. She is also a certified uh, served state uh, food protection manager and certified halal lead auditor. Yan, yan, ganda po, no? Uh -huh. And as a researcher, Ms. Joanne uh, conducts uh, product and process development studies. Meron din po yung mga test and analysis uh, na yung re-request po ng iba't ibang mga uh, clients po, no? mga contracting parties. And uh, as trainer on selected food pricing technologies tulad po ng ating ginagawa ngayon sa uh, dried uh, fish processing. At may pang iba pang mga na-handle pang mga uh, topics si Ms. Joanne uh, sa ino-offer po natin na training. Maraming pa po yan. Okay, so Without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our resource speaker, Ms. Joanna Marie Ramos. Uh, Ms. Ms. Joanne. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, Ms. Joanne, but before that, uh, before your uh, your screen, uh, I mentioned ko lang po that uh, later, of, later on po sa ating um, question and answer portion, makasama po natin ang... Um, uh, si Ma'am Charito Villaluz. Uh, oh, siya, po, siya po yung uh, mentor uh, ni, ni Joanne. Yan, mm -hmm. As mentioned by our resource speaker. So mamaya po kasama po namin si Ma'am Chat Villaluz uh, para po sa uh, Q&A. So kasama po ni Miss Joanne si Ma'am Chat uh, sa Food Processing Division. Si Ma'am Chat naman po ay Senior Science Research Specialist. Yan. Okay, Miss Joanne, go ahead, please. Thank you. Okay. Moving po. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good morning po to our participants. I am Joanna Marie. Ramos from the Food Processing Division of the USC ITBI, and I will be your speaker for uh, today's webinar on dried fish processing. So during my talk this morning, I will provide you with some background on how fish as spoilage occurs, what are the preventions, followed by fish drying principles and different methods. We'll also discuss the processes involved in fish drying, product defects that we could encounter, the Philippine National Standards and Business Opportunity Plans for those who are planning na mag-business um, using this ano po, technology. Since marami po kanina na nag-mention na um, they're planning to have their own business in dried fish processing po or other fish uh, products. Po. So to start with... So to start with, a list on some of the reasons why we are processing fish. Uh, the first one is to assure safety of the fish we consume at home or sell at the market. Next is to uh, minimize post-harvest losses. Uh, for example, po, in many islands in our countries, if ever na hindi maibenta lahat ng na-harvest or nahuli nila, they can process it para hindi maitapon or masayang lang. No? And of course, we do processing to meet quality standards and consumer uh, preferences. And because you added value and you make it convenient for them to consume the product, you can sell it to a profitable but reasonable price. And the last one is to extend the shelf life of the fish and to make it available even if it's out of the season. Lalo na po yung mga varieties na minsan ay mahirap mahuli or wala po talagang mabili sa market. And we also want to extend the shelf life of the fish because it is highly perishable or madali pong mapanis because of destructive processes caused by uh, enzymes. 
caused by bacteria no? at oxidation or acidity and physical damages po due to poor handling during harvesting, uh, storage, or transportation that eventually na pwede pong mag-result sa contamination. So ang enzyme po at bacteria are naturally present or nandyan talaga siya sa ating mga isda. So ang enzymes are biological chemicals po na present sa gut and stomach ng mga isda and for their digestion. So tumutulong po ito sa pagtunaw ng kanilang mga kinakain. But once na namatay po yung isda, hindi tumitigil yung activities ng enzyme or ng bacteria. Instead, yung isda po mismo, yung nagiging source ng kanilang pangangailangan to survive and proliferate or magparami na siyang nagpapabilis po ng pagkasira ng ating isda. Ang oxidation naman po, or ang CDT, it occurs when oxygen reacts with the oil or fat of the fish leading to sour and unpleasant smell or taste. So this one is very ano very common sa mga isda na mataas ang fat content. Tulad po ng mackerel, tuna, and sardines. So yung rancidity rin po is yung pagiging maanta in food. Uh, and once na naging rancid, it is actually not good for uh, our consumption because of safety concerns and compromised quality, particularly in, uh, po, in flavor and aroma. So now, in order to prevent fish spoilage, we could start po with proper handling. Ibig sabihin po, uh, fish should be handled uh, with care at all times. So we need to avoid na magkaroon po ng bruises or splits yung skin, sumabog ang chan. Kasi po, kapag nangyari yun, madali na pong makakapasok yung bacteria or, uh, or contaminants dun sa flesh ng isda. Kung hindi po natin may iwasan yung mga physical damages na to. And also, uh, uh, for the proper storage conditions, we need to cool down the temperature of fish uh, by icing, chilling, or freezing. So because the main concern here is to uh, is the activities of enzymes and bacteria because their activities slow down in low temperatures. But hindi po na-eliminate or uh, na-deactivate, na-slow down lang yung kanilang uh, activities. And we can also use other food processing technologies like fermentation, uh, thermal processing or canning, drying and dehydration, which will be the focus of the remaining topics. So when we say uh, drying or fish drying, we reduce or most of the water or moisture content of our raw material is removed. Halimbawa po by means of evaporation. So moisture content so yun po uh, when we say dry nga po yun na reduce yung moisture content or yung water ng ating raw material uh, for example by means of evaporation and once po na yung moisture content ng product ay bumaba yung water activity po ay bumababa rin so, ang water activity is the unbound water or available water na ginagamit ng microorganisms for their growth. So, theoretically, uh, ang isda po ay mayroong 80% na tubig. Initial, ito po yung initial. So, after drying, ang expected natin or dapat na maging um, final moisture content niya ay between 35 to 45%. And also, ang drying po ay pwede natin i-combine or could be combined with salting. Um, kasi po yung salting, bukod sa nakaka-improve or nakaka-add siya ng flavor sa ating isda, it also an additional preservation. So, how does salt preserve fish? No? First, uh, salt extracts water from the fish. So, the water from the fish ano, um, nag-moves out. So, so um, napepreserve po ng salt yung isda. Kasi yung water from the fish nag-moves out into the saturated salt solution kung saan po nakababad or nakalayer yung ating isda. So, ito po yung tinatawag natin na osmosis. No? At kapag po sinabi natin na saturated, 
mataas po yung concentration o yung amount ng salt na ating inilagay sa tubig kung saan po nakababad yung ating uh, isda. Next is, uh, salty condition is unfavorable for spoilage bacteria. Given that, we use clean and dry salt. Ang salt po kasi, it can also lower water activity of the food. Ang isa nga po pala sa example nito is yung fermented uh, fish sauce or patis na mataas ang salt content, which is 20-25%. Na kahit na mataas yung water content ng patis, yung water activity niya is controlled or, or has a water activity of, I think, below 0.85. That's why it is preserved and is uh, shelf life stable. And in terms of salt, uh, we can use rock salt and iodized salt in compliance with the ASING law. Pero marami po sa dried fish manufacturers preferred na gamitin yung rock salt because unlike iodized salt, uh, hindi po ito nag ng um, aftertaste. Pero kapag naman po iodized salt yung ginamit natin, tolerable naman po yung naiiwan na aftertaste or yung nabibigay niya aftertaste. And in terms of quality ng salt, it should be fine, clean, and food grade with low chemical impurities. Uh, for example po, ang salt is high in terms of uh, magnesium or calcium. So yung product could have a bitter taste and matigas or brittle po yung, fl yung flesh ng isda. And also, these chemicals slow down the absorption of uh, sodium chloride of pure salt doon sa flesh ng ating isda. And aside from that, these chemicals are hygroscopic and tend to absorb water, making the fish more difficult to dry and to keep dry. For the salting, uh, we have two methods, no? The first one is so wet salting or brining. And it's done by soaking the fish in prepared concentration of salt solution. The salt concentration as well as the soaking time depends on the variety, size, and market form of the fish. So for example, po, uh, ang soaking time, or sa soaking time, if malaki po ang isda, of course, longer ang soaking time. And in terms of market form, if a split type or dain, mas maikli ang soaking kumpara po dun sa whole or buo tulad po ng tuyo at saksak. Uh, this method is also applicable sa matatabang isda dahil naiiwasan po natin dito yung rancidity dahil hindi po masyadong exposed sa hangin or oxygen yung ating isda. And uh, mas uniform po or even yung, yung salt na naaabsorb ng isda sa ganitong method. And ito rin po yung nire-recommend or uh, mas ginagamit in terms of commercial production ng dried fish. Uh, yung the next method or another method is dry salting, wherein uh, yung salt is nire rub into the surface of the fish and we have to make sure na yung entire surface ng fish is covered ng salt. So if, mas malaki, if malaki po ang size ng isda, we need to arm more salt for equal amount of salt intake. And alternatively, you can apply dry salt in a layer system or piled up or yung patong-patong po. No? So ibig sabihin po, sa bawat pagitan ng isda, meron po tayong uh, asin na nakasingit doon. So yung water po na lumalabas mula sa isda, naalis po natin yon or dinidrain natin. So pagkatapos po ng dry salting, ang mapapansin po natin dito, medyo dry, yung medyo dry na yung surface ng isda or yung flesh, kaya po nababawasan yung... Uh, oras ng ating pagpapatuyo. Pero pagdating po sa matatabang isda, uh, this is not the recommended method kasi po madaling aanta or magiging rancid yung isda. At isa pa po sa disadvantage is uh, pwede pong maging uneven yung ating salting with the use of this method. So with it, when it comes to drying, we also have different methods. The first one is uh, sun drying wherein a uh, we spread out or laid out yung fish in mesh trays or drying rocks. And then expose po natin ito sa uh, open area no? under the heat of sun. Uh, this method is indeed is practical kasi hindi po natin kailangan ng special equipment to do the process. But since open area nga po ito ginagawa, very prone siya sa contamination. Some areas po na napuntahan namin uh, before, before pandemic sa mga trainings, 
hindi po nagiging practice yung ano yung paglalagay ng net over the drying rack for protection against contamination no. Kaya po yun ang isa sa mga ina, isa ina-advise namin na wag nilang kakalimutan na maglagay ng net or kulambo during drying or sun drying para hindi nga po magkaroon ng alikabok or madapuan ng insekto yung mga dinadry nila. Um, another disadvantage pa po of this method is uh, this is weather dependent and longer yung drying time. Na normally, tumatagal po ng 3 to 4 days. So kapag po masama ang panahon din, of course, we need to stop the drying process. Kaya po lalong tumatagal at pwedeng hindi na po maging even ang dry ng isda na pwede pong magresulta sa early spoilage. So sa pagpili naman po ng area kung saan tayo magsa-sun dry, no? First, kailangan po malapit sa preparation area natin at away from the passing vehicles or yung kalsada, no? Para po maiwasan natin yung uh, pagkakaroon ng alikabok ng ating mga dinadry na isda. Of course, yung area mismo kailangan po ay malinis at at tuyo. Yung drying racks na gagamitin po natin dapat naka-elevate or nakaangat around 1 meter with respect to the ground to allow uh, air circulation around the fish and to increase the drying rate and of course to avoid contamination. Uh, portable shades or plastic covering should be available. Uh, para kung sakali man pong biglang umulan, ano, matakpan natin agad yung dinadry natin mga isda. And no animals or pets are allowed in the drying area. Aside from baka tangayin nila yung ating dinadry, not wala po tayong maging final product, ang unang concern po natin dito talaga is yung ano, hindi nila makontaminate yung, mga, yung products natin or yung dinadry natin. Next is solar drying. Actually, this is almost the same with the sun drying except that we are using solar tent dryers that protects the fish from contamination and sudden change of weather. So ito po uh, nasa picture and yung design ng uh, solar tent dryer na to, ito po yung isa sa nakita namin sa training na pinandak namin in Agoncillo, Batangas. So, and yun nga po, later on, nagkaroon po ng innovations no, and improvements wherein yung air velocity or yung bilis po ng hangin na tumutulong sa pagpagtutuyo ng isda as well as the temperature relative humidity or yung tubig na nandoon sa hangin are controlled and can be maintained. And this is the cabinet drying method that offers a few to several advantages. Uh, first, it's not weather dependent and even and shorter yung drying time compared uh, with the previous methods na na-mention ko. Protected din po yung ating products from uh, potential contaminants like insects, uh, uh, microorganisms or bacteria and adverse weather condition. No? So kahit umulan sa labas or makulimlim, no? continue pa rin po yung drying natin kasi hindi yon factor para uh, magkaroon tayo ng or magtumigil yung ating drying. Kaya lang po ang drawback nitong method na to, medyo mataas po yung ating investment because of the equipment of course and yung product medyo mataas din po yung presyo because of the added utility cost, like electricity or LPG, na kailangan po natin no, para ma-operate yung mga equipment or ilan sa mga equipment natin. Uh, and there are also factors na nakaka-affect sa uh, fish drying. Uh, it is uh, related, yung ilan po dito related sa dryer na or features or aspects ng dryer na ginagamit natin. Yung iba naman po ay related doon sa properties ng ating dinadry na material. So, for example po, ang air velocity ay mabilis no? and yung temperature ay uh, high enough and yung relative humidity is low, it is expected na magiging mabilis ang drying natin. So, pagdating naman po sa isda, if malaki ang surface area or manipis or maliit ang isda, mabab ang fat content at initial moisture content and we can have a shorter drying time. So uh, now that you are familiar with the principles, methods, and factors affecting fish drying, we can proceed to the drying, uh, dried fish processing operations. So for the raw materials, uh, we need fresh fish as much as possible kasi po kung hindi fresh ang ating gagamitin or substandard ang ating raw materials, 
Okay. So, ayun nga po, for the raw materials, uh, we need fresh fish, no, as much as possible. Kasi po kapag kayo ng substandard or mababang quality ng raw material, so expect natin na yung kalalabasan or yung final product po natin ay ganun din. So, mababa din po ang quality. And then, bukod po sa isda, kailangan po natin ng uh, food grade salt and potable water. And for the equipment or utensils, we need a uh, standard uh, sta industrial weighing scale, chopping board and knife, kitchen scissors uh, para sa pagbibituka, pagtatanggal ng mga gills, a large basin para sa ating soaking, graduated cylinder and salinometer, cheese cloth, stainless steel ladle, uh, colander, and for ang uh, equipment natin cabinet dryer, if hindi po available ang cabinet dryer, uh, pwede naman po tayong gumamit ng uh, elevated na drying racks or mesh trays for the sun drying and kung meron po kayong solar tent dryer. And for the packaging material and equipment, we need weighing scale or top loading balance para po yung per pack natin ay consistent or para parehas yung timbang. Impulse sealer or band sealer, uh, polyethylene bags, disposable gloves. No? And yung iba pa po kailangan natin, at first kailangan natin ng zone rocks or unscented zone rocks as uh, cleaning or as and hair net. And uh, before processing, gawin po nating practice yung tamang paghuhugas ng kamay. And our clothes should be clean as well. The processing tools, equipment should be cleaned and sanitized. We could prepare the sanitizing solution by mixing 7.5 ml chlorine and 1 gallon of water. For higher concentration naman po, uh, 15 ml uh, for every 1 gallon of water. Uh, pwede po natin itong gamitin uh, isa hanggang dalawang beses. And another thing po is uh, remove all your accessories, uh, wear hairnet, and face mask. Kasi po, uh, we need to directly handling the food. Go back. So first po, in the receiving of raw materials, uh, we have to make sure na po yung isda is of good quality. So I listed down So I uh, uh, I listed down the parameters. Uh, na kailangan po nating i-check sa ating raw materials para po malaman natin kung uh, maganda po yung quality or fresh pa yung ating isda. So kailangan po pagdating sa ice, clear, hindi uh, not sunken or wrinkled, a uh, uniform bright red gills, no blood spots on the gill covers. Uh, firm yung stomach no kailangan po hindi sabog or pumutok. Uh, should spring back to its original shape once pressed. Yung scales po dapat or yung kaliskes hindi dapat madaling matanggal. Shiny yung skin, slightly slimy yung skin din, and wala pong mabahong amoy. Next is uh, sorting and grading. So bakit po natin kailangan ng sorting and grading? Um, kailangan, kailangan po natin ito to facilitate uniform brining and drying. Kung nang nasabi ko kanina, no, ang brine concentration po kasi and soaking time ay nakadepende sa uh, size ng isda. If pagsasamahin po yung iba't ibang size ng isda sa iisang soaking, ang magiging problema po rito kung susundin natin yung time na kailangan para sa malalaking isda, masasobrahan naman po sa salt intake or alat yung maliliit. So, so, um, Kung pagsasamahin, kung pagsasamahin naman, kung, kung ang susundin naman pong time or soaking time is yung sa maliliit, magkukulang naman po ng salt intake yung malalaking isda. At ang implication po nito is uh, madaling masira yung product natin. And then after that is eviscerating or pagtatanggal po ng gills and internal organs and splitting if necessary. Kasi there are varieties po tulad ng tunsoy or sapsap na maliit 
and no need na natin hatiin kasi po masisira na yung isda. Next is washing, wherein we need to completely remove the remaining uh, internal organs or residues or kaya po ay blood spots. And this will be followed by brining or wet, uh, or wet brining. For the preparation po ng salt solution, kapag po ay, ang isda ay whole market form, tulad nga po ng tu uh, tuyo or sapsap, uh, 25% ang brine concentration. At mas matagal po yung ating soaking time na umaabot po ng 3 hours. Since hindi nga po natin to in-split at inalisa ng uh, bituka, yung malalaking isda naman po is for the split type or in daing. And yung brine concentration is uh, 20%. Mas mababa po ng konti. And of course, shorter po yung soaking time, which is 1 to 1.5 hours. Uh, to prepare yung 20% ng brine concentration, kailangan po natin ng one part ng salt for every four, four parts of water. So that's around 250 grams of salt for every one liter po ng tubig. And, uh, for the 25%, we need one part of salt for every three parts of water. So kailangan po natin ng around 333 grams ng water for, uh, ay, ng salt, I mean, for every one liter of water. And don't forget po na mix, na mix or haluin natin no, until ma-dissolve yung salt. Gamit po yung stainless steel ladle and i-filter po natin yung prepared na salt solution using clean cheese to eliminate yung mga unnecessary na suspended solids. So how will you know po if yung na-prepare ninyong salt is tama yung, no, yung na-prepare ninyong brine or salt solution is tama yung uh, kanyang Concentration. So you can use salinometer or brine hydrometer. So this is a device we use to measure the percentage of salt dissolved in a salt. Uh, I mean, uh, dissolved salt in a solution. So ang ginagawa po dito para sa pag-measure, um, sa isang 100 ml na graduated cylinder, maglalagay po tayo ng prepared na brine. So around 95 ml. And then isoak po natin doon yung salinometer slowly to avoid the formation of uh, bubbles and take the reading once po na nag-stabilize na yung uh, salinometer doon sa brine. And uh, do take note din po na sa brining, we have to make sure na fully soak ang ating isda to facilitate even salt intake. So what we do sa mga previous trainings, uh, nilalagyan po namin ng pampabigat sa ibabaw. Ito po nung nasa picture, no? yung enough lang po para hindi masira yung isda. Kaya po ang ginagamit namin is yung mga clean shopping boards. Uh, pwede rin naman po yung malilinis na plangga na basta lang po mas sigurado natin na hindi lumulutang yung isda na sinusoak natin. And then after soaking, necessary po na gawin na i-rinse natin siya by dipping the fish in water for around or about 30 seconds to remove yung surface salt or yung excess salt. At kapag po hindi natin ginawa yung rinsing or ni-skip natin itong process na to, mapapansin nyo po sa final product ninyo na magkakaroon ng formation ng salt crystals doon sa surface. At isa po yun sa mga defects no, na pwede talaga natin ma-encounter. And before tayo mag-lay doon sa trays, before natin siya i-arrange doon sa drying trays natin, pakirecord po yung timbang dahil kakailanganin po natin yun eh, as basis kung enough na ba yung drying natin. So sa paglilay po, kapag split type yung uh, ating ida-dry, yung skin po dapat yung nakatouch doon sa surface ng drying trays. At dapat po ay may tamang spacing para po ma-maximize natin yung laki ng drying trays. At maiwasan din po yung pagkakadikit-dikit ng mga isda. So if uh, sun drying ang ating gagawin, since madalas nga po hindi siya talaga natatapos ng isang araw, no? ang sinasuggest namin is uh, ilagay po sa malinis na plastic bag yung partially dried na mga isda and then i-store po sa refrigerator or chiller and then ituloy po kinabukasan yung uh, pagtutuyo. And then for the cabinet drying, uh, i-preheat po natin yung dryer and sa loob, uh, sa first 1 to 3 hours po ng ating drying, iset po natin sa medyo mababang temperature, around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. 
para maiwasan po natin yung case hardening. And then after that, pwede na po natin iset yung dryer sa 52 degrees Celsius. But of course, depende pa rin sa size ng isda. So kung malaki po yung isda, Hello? So, kung malaki po yung isda, 60 uh, degrees Celsius with a uh, shorter drying time. So, kapag naman po maliit at manipis, uh, nasa 50 degrees Celsius lang po tayo para hindi naman siya ma-overdry. So, malalaman po natin kung enough na po yung drying, eh, uh, kung hindi na soft yung flesh or hindi na dump or mamasa, medyo basa yung flesh ng isda. Pwede rin po natin actually siyang i-base sa timbang. No? So halimbawa po, ang timbang ng isda, bago nyo siya i-dry ay nasa dalawang kilo. Dapat po, after drying, yung timbang ay nasa less than or equal to 1 kilo o kapag po nangalahati na yung timbang. Actually po, sa measurement kasi nung, ano, nung final moisture content, gumagamit ng, ano, ng equipment like vacuum oven or moisture analyzer. Dahil po medyo may kamahalan po yung equipment na to at it will take some time para makuha mo yung result mo. Kaya po ang sinasuggest na lang namin uh, sa mga trainings is yung sa timbang. Ako kunin yung, uh, kaya, po pinapa, kaya po sabi ko kanina, yung bago mag-lay, eh, i-record yung timbang. Um, isa pa pong way to check yung kung tama na po, or, and yung end point ng drying is yung nga po yung subjective evaluation. So, na-touch nyo po yung flesh kung basa pa ba, o kailangan dun, tapos dun po kayo magde-decide kung kailangan pa bang i-extend yung uh, drying. Hanggang sa, pag paulit-ulit nyo na siyang ginagawa, ma-establish na rin eventually yung inyong uh, drying time. Yeah. And then after drying po, hindi po agad tayo magpo-proceed sa packaging. So, kailangan po nating mag-cool uh, and mag-sweat. Uh, so, sa cooling and sweating, um, ginagawa po natin ito para ma-equilibrate yung moisture content ng ating na-dry na, na isda. And kapag po ito ay ipinakage agad natin, na hindi natin ito ginagawa itong step na to, magkakaroon po ng moisture build-up doon sa packaging uh, na later on magre-result po sa pag-aamag or mold growth. So, papansin nyo po parang nagpapawis yung loob ng ng packaging, yung surface niya, may tubig-tubig. Pagkalabas po ng dried fish uh, sa dryer, ang ginagawa po namin, iniiwan po namin muna siya sa drying trays. Tapos kinocover ng net no, for at least 6 hours po. Tsaka pa lang po magpo-proceed sa packaging. So ganun lang po kasimple yung cooling and uh, sweating. For the packaging, what we suggest is a polyethylene or polypropylene plastic bags with at least 0.003 inch yung kapal. Uh, and dapat po meron din kayong band sealer or impulse sealer. At yung paggamit po ng old newspaper na madalas po natin nakikita sa mga wet market, no, discourage po ito for hygienic reasons and hindi po kasi ito GMP or Good Manufacturing Practices compliant. At nag impose po ito ng health hazard dahil po yung ink na ginagamit for the printing is uh, toxic po. So last, for the storage, um, store po natin yung products natin in cool, uh, dry, well-ventilated area, at least 15 cm from the floor. And uh, 15 cm from the floor para po maiwasan natin yung, ano, yung moisture uptake from the ground. And of course, yung contamination po. And when it comes to shelf life, Tumatagal po ang dried fish ng 6 months or more but it varies depending on the formulation, sa packaging process, package, uh, or packaging materials no, na ginagamit natin as well as the storage conditions. So dito po sa ITBI, yung other researchers po and other experts from our division conducted the shelf life study sa dried tunsoy, galunggong and hasa-hasa na nakapackage po dun sa Uh, PE or PP na plastic bags. So kapag po ang storage temperature niya ay room temp lang, uh, ito po mabot ng one month. Two to three months, kapag naman po refrigerated 
and up to 6 months or more kapag naman po frozen. So kapag po halimbawa, nag-decide kayo na baguhin yung packaging, no? Dahil gusto nyo, um, gusto nyo mas makapal yung packaging ninyo, pwede naman po. Pero hindi po ibig sabihin nito na kung ano po yung nakalagay dito na shelf life, yun din yung applicable na shelf life doon sa product ninyo. Kasi po, kailangan natin na uh, i-consider yung bagong packaging. Well, we need to do another shelf life study and we don't recommend the estimation of shelf life. Kasi po, the, there are properties of a certain food product na kailangan natin tingnan bago po natin masabi na it is still safe to consume bago po dumating yung ganitong day. So, uh, na-discuss ko po yung sa na-discuss ko pong process, there are times nga po na hindi nasusunod even yung standard formulation or processing schedule like soaking time or drying time. Kaya po nagkakaroon tayo ng defects sa ating product. Tulad po ng pagkakaroon ng amag. Okay. Uh, so yun na po, uh, there are times po na hindi nasusunod yung uh, process, uh, process schedule tulad po ng drying time. Kaya po nagkakaroon ang ating products ng defects tulad because napaka Hello? Uh, so there are times po na yun hindi nasusunod yung standard formulation or processing like uh, schedule like soaking time or drying time. Kaya po nagkakaroon ng defects yung ating product tulad po ng pagkakaroon ng amag because of insufficient drying Kaya po kung ang na-establish nyo pong uh, drying time ay around or 10 to 13 hours, kailangan po uh, mag magstick tayo doon para po hindi magkulang sa drying at eventually po amagin. Dahil yung amag po, gustong gusto po nyo yung mga moist or damp surfaces dahil uh, requirement po rin nila yan para mag-grow sila or uh, dumami. Nagiging cost rin po kapag hindi appropriate yung packaging na ginamit nyo. Halimbawa po, sobrang manipis. Uh, and of course, yung poor storage conditions and in that inadequate cooling or sweating before packaging. Ang insect infestation naman po ay pwedeng mangyari during processing, packaging, storage, and distribution or transportation. So para po maiwasan ito, kailangan, uh, we have to make sure na yung mga dadaan ng proseso ng products natin ay malinis ang working area para po hindi pamahayan ng mga insekto. Next, uh, ang pinking or red and reddening discoloration as well as the presence of chocolate brown peppery spots. Ito naman po ay because of the use of impure or yung uh, marumi, I mean, uh, hindi siya uh, pure na salt. No? Kaya po ang nangyari, nagkakaroon po ng growth of salt-loving bacteria at uh, pwede rin po na dahil ito sa contamination. Yung case hardening po na na-mention ko kanina, nangyayari po ito kapag yung unang drying pa lang or pagkasalang pa lang, sobrang taas na po agad ng temperature. Nangyayari po ang unang nadadry is yung surface nung isda. Kaya po yung naiiwang moisture doon sa inside the flesh, nahihirapan na pong lumabas or mag-evaporate. Kaya po nangyayari ang even yung drying nung ating final product. So next is CDP, which is very common po yun nga sa mga uh, high fat content na isda. And because of improper packaging and poor storage conditions, uh, dried fish can be exposed to air or oxygen that will eventually result to an CDP that is associated with uh, off flavor and aroma. Uh, stains is because of the remaining blood and or internal organ residues because of poor cleaning and washing. Nagiging brittle naman po or tough texture uh, yung ating dried fish because of yung nga po over drying or excessive moisture uh, loss during storage or transport. And yung the last one, yung sour, bitter, or foul odor, a uh, moist and soft texture, uh, insufficient salt intake uh, in, or insufficient drying, and a poor storage conditions. And uh, we also have the Philippine uh, National Standards for Dried Salted Fish. This prescribes quality 
safety requirements and specification for all commercial dried salted fish in our country. At sakop din po nito yung mga yun nga, manufacturers, mga nagre-repackage, as well as yung mga uh, imports and exports. In terms of uh, physical chemical properties, the product should have a water activity of 0.78, 12% as minimum for the salt content, but may vary provided that the prescribed water activity is not exceeded and 200 parts per million or ppm as maximum for the histamine content. So yung histamine po is a biological toxin responsible for food poisoning or foodborne illness. And this is associated with consumption of fish like uh, mackerel and tuna. Typically observed symptoms are hives, you know, skin rashes, uh, headaches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, burning sensations of mouth and lips, and uh, difficulty in breathing. Ang histamine po uh, is produced when yung fish are time and temperature abuse. Ibig sabihin po kapag na-expose siya sa time temperature, uh, I mean temperature danger zone, yun po ay na between 5 to 57 degrees Celsius for a longer period of time. Kaya proper handling po ng fish is really important because once na yung histamine has been produced, it cannot be eliminated by normal cooking or freezing temperature and its toxicity remains intact. And we also have uh, microbiological specifications. So ito naman po yung ating reference para malaman natin kung pasok pa ba sa limit yung microbial count or load ng inyong product. So paano po natin ito madedetermine, itong lahat na to? You can submit uh, your products to a laboratory testing facility like what we have here in USITDI para po ma-analyze yung products ninyo. And kailangan po natin, kailan po natin ipapatest itong mga products. So if you are planning to commercialize your product, so you need to apply for project, product registration sa FDA. And yung results po nito is one of the requirements na hihingin sa inyo to proceed with the application. And for the business opportunity plan for whole dried fish, uh, here's the list of direct materials, utilities, labor, packaging materials, quantities no, with corresponding cost. So assuming that we can produce 16 kilos of dried fish from 40 kilos ton soy or 32 packs, so that's 500 grams per pack. So ang unit cost per pack is 95 pesos. The selling price is 124 pesos, so you have 23% na markup. Sa loob naman po ng isang taon, ang magiging investment nyo po ay 240,070 pesos. Ang ROI, or return on investment, is 70%. And, and ang payback period po ay aabot ng 2 years. For the split dried fish naman po, uh, fresh mackerel po uh, yung fish na ginamit to prepare this BOP. So if we can produce 20 to 21 kilos of dried fish from 50 kilos of fresh mackerel or 41 packs, uh, so that's 500 grams ulit per pack. Uh, so you have, uh, so ang unit cost per pack is 209 pesos. The selling price is 272 pesos. So mayroon po ulit kayong 23% na markup. So sa loob po ng isang taon, ang magiging investment ninyo ay 350,280 pesos. Ang ROI ay 93% and the, ang payback period po ay aabot din ng dalawang taon. So here are some of the contact details ng mga suppliers if, uh, na madalas po namin nilalapitan for our packaging material requirements. So you can also visit their websites or e pwede nyo po silang email for your inquiries para po masabi ninyo kung ano yung mga um, packaging material requirements ninyo. And uh, for the packaging and drying equipment, uh, pwede nyo pong tanongin or i-contact itong mga suppliers. You can also visit their official websites. No? For, uh, maliba po gusto nyo mag, uh, maghingi ng quotation. Uh, and these companies or suppliers, hindi po namin sila ina-advertise. Uh, this is just to give you an idea kung saan po kayo pwedeng makabili or mag-inquire. And uh, that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you po for your time and attention for today.
and uh, I appreciate that I've had this opportunity to share our technologies, our knowledge sa inyo po. And uh, yun po, thank you po. Okay, so thank you very much, Ms. Joanne, for a very comprehensive and well-discussed presentation about uh, dried fish processing. So napakaganda po ng discussion po no, ni, ni Ms. Joanne sa ating topic. So kompleto po no, uh, yung mga tips po uh, para po magkaroon tayo ng quality na product. Uh, importante po yung quality ng raw materials. Uh, yung pong tips din po sa mga packaging, uh, yung pong shelf life, discuss din po niya kung ano po yung shelf life. Kasi kanina, nakatoka po din sa chat box, marami, pong, marami na pong nagtanong about shelf life. So, yun, nandyan na po ang, nakatanyo na po yung answer na po dun sa inyong mga uh, questions. Uh, maging yung sa mga defects po, no, uh, ng the dried fish, no? So, yan po ay yung mga defects na yan, for example, ay due to insufficient drying, mga unsuitable packaging, storage condition, naging yung po mga standards on dried fish. So, may pinakita rin po si Ms. Joanne. And ito po ay na-discuss po ng maayos. Uh, yung pong mga BOPs, no? So, para lang po magkaroon kayo ng idea uh, kung kayo po ay mag-focus uh, po nito sa business. And yung po mga packaging uh, suppliers, so uh, nagbigay din po ng mga uh, contact details si Ms. Joanne. And for, meron po kanina ako nakita, nagtatanong about the uh, cabinet dryer. Ayun uh, po, uh, naipakita rin po ng ating resource speaker, yung pwede nyo pong contactin. Uh, yan po ay yung Dakila Trading Corporation. So, yan. Yan po yung uh, supplier po ng cabinet dryer. And for, for many uh, inquiries po dito sa ating chat box regarding po sa presentation, ano, yung copy ng presentation, uh, later po mag-provide po tayo ng link for this. So tapusin lang po natin itong ating webinar at uh, mabibigyan po kayo ng copy nito later on. Okay. So again, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Joanne, for uh, sharing your uh, knowledge. Uh, to our participants regarding uh, dried fish processing. So, I guess marami ng sa ating viewers ang excited uh, para magsimula ng business o kaya ay uh, kanilang i-apply yung kanilang learnings dito sa uh, webinar natin uh, on uh, dried fish processing. Okay, so ito po, uh, uh, yung po mga contact details pa rin po namin. Uh, kung meron po kayong mga questions pa in mind na hindi nyo po naisip kanina during po sa ating Q&A. Pwede pa rin po kayong humabol no, na magtanong o mag, yung mga clarity, clarifications nyo po about this topic. Uh, yung may contact po yung Technological Services Division. Nandiyan po yung aming mga email address and contact uh, number. So, Chu Ma'am Nelia Elisa Florendo, siya po ang Chief ng uh, Technological Services Division or You may also uh, contact po ang Food Pricing Division uh, through Dr. Norberto Ambagan. Siya naman po ang Chief ng Food Pricing Division. Nandiyan din po ang kanilang mga email addresses. And kanina, uh, nabanggit po ni, ni Ms. Joanne, uh, doon po sa mga nag-inquire about po yung mga, uh, mga documents uh, na pwede pong i-share sa inyo ni Ms. Joanne. Uh, yan po, nandiyan na rin po yung email ad ni Ms. Joanne. Uh, para kung meron po kayo mga, habol, mga pahabol pa na clarifications and other concerns. Yan. Okay, so uh, feel free lang po kayo ano, uh, na, na contacting kami kung meron pa kayo mga, uh, mga concerns for training, mga other technical assistance, uh, food processing, and other expertise of ITDI. Okay, so ayan. Maraming salamat po. No? And uh, before we end, Uh, once again, we would like to thank our resource speaker, uh, Ms. Joanna Marie Ramos, and uh, of course, si Ma'am Chat, Ma'am Charito Villaluz, for your expertise and knowledge uh, shared to our participants for this webinar. And uh, syempre, yung time nyo, no, and effort and commitment uh, 
para maging possible itong ating webinar na to. And of course, to Dr. Norbert Ambagan, siya nga po yung chief ng FPD, and to TSB family for making this webinar possible. Maraming maraming pong salamat. So, thank you once again sa lahat ng ating participants uh, for joining and for your time. Uh, sa ating webinar na to for your inputs, inyong active participation sa lahat po ng inyong mga clarification sa inyong mga tanong. Maraming maraming pong salamat and uh, we look forward po na may apply nyo po yung lahat po ng inyong learnings po sa webinar na to. No? Okay, so that ends our session and uh, we hope uh, we hope to have you again po sa aming mga future webinars for this year. So Kaya na po yung mga nabanggit ko na uh, kasama po sa series ng webinar na to. Uh, next month po ay uh, thermal processing naman po. And then sa April, uh, yung po nabanggit ko na nila, nila ma'am chat, uh, smoke fish pricing naman po yung next na i-discuss. Okay, so again, you may visit our FB page and web page for announcements of our webinars. Okay, so marami po salamat. And have a good day. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Tumitilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit Sa bayan ng aming hati Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulong Ating abutin ang pangarap niwan Sa pamamagitan ng agham Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susulong At ikabutin ang pangarapiwan Sa pamamagitan na Sa pamamagitan na Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging science. Ganda o simula na Humanda sabay-sabay akyat Hawak kamay tayo yung atilipan